Hello, I'm John. And I'm Jess. And this is the Graceless Living Podcast. Hello and uh, welcome back to the, uh, was it the fourth episode of the uh, Graceless Living Podcast where um, Jess and John talk about things they've experienced, endured, read, watched, eaten, written, thought about, achieved, squandered and laughed at and that is a huge mouthful that I regret writing. (laughs) Well that is our tagline and that's what we've got to use. (laughs) Yeah, it makes it rather broad brush doesn't it, it means we can talk about whatever we want. Yeah. Uh, so um, for, we've had a bit of a hiatus, haven't we, um, for one reason or another, but um, so for well, those of you, go on. a hiatus, I think we can now call it a Jess and John does podcast when they feel like it. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I don't because... intend to do, <laughs> to do it when I, just because I'm forced to do it, it uh, doesn't flow naturally otherwise. So anyway, for for those who don't know us... Yep, yeah, so as I said, I am Jess and I work with children and enjoy a wide variety of creative hobbies, one of which being writing. So I have my own website called gristlessliving.co.uk and uh, it's where I basically just blog about some things and put some of my adventures up, anything really I want to talk about, have a look at. So that's kind of what I do. What about you, John? Cool. Uh, well, I'm uh, I'm John. I'm a chemical engineer from Cheshire, and I sort of like photography. I sort of like to play a bit of music. I like sciencey things and engineeringy things, and just like having a good time. So that's me, really. Uh, so shall we move on? Oh yes, before we do start properly, though, I think it's uh, we, we before we um, get into podcasting seriously. I don't really want to pay for any hosting um, <laughs> until this becomes a bit bigger. So, for the time being, uh, the previous episodes of the podcast, when they do eventually fall off of the uh, the Buzzsprout uh, free period, will appear on uh, the Gracious Living YouTube channel uh, as, as videos there. So you can go back and listen to everything. It's not disappeared. Yeah. Uh, You'll also find them on the website. And if you are on the Buzzsprout, I think episode three is still on there. But um, one and two, you'll you'll find on YouTube, won't you? And that's that Buzzsprout thing makes it available via via Spotify and Apple Podcasts, etc. Yeah. So, uh, at least it remains there for at least ninety days, I think, so far. We'll get we'll get to it in the future. Maybe we'll we'll, we'll figure out a way we can uh, fund it somehow. So anyway, so what have you been up to, Jess? Lately, it's just been I've been in the kitchen, and I know that sounds like some sort of joke. But like I have actually been in the kitchen just doing loads of different things and I feel fairly confident at this point in time saying that I bake. Because if you'd have known me before, you would have been like, no, she does not bake at all because I was useless. You are getting a lot better. Yeah, but I'm going to say that at the moment I have been baking and trying out loads of different recipes to your dismay and also to your delight it's to my dismay because my belly is fast expanding and to my delight because they're actually pretty damn good i'm I'm, I've been (laughs) rather impressed i'm thoroughly looking forward to this pavlova you're 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 planning to make me yeah the next one i tried to make it a little i mean pavlova is so sugary and it's Mm. just sugar and cream and fruit really yeah excellent love it but um, I've tried, I've had a look and the BBC have a, a thing called the Summer Pavlova. So that's my current adventure is the Summer Pavlova, which is supposed to be lighter than a normal Pavlova on the sugar and the cream. So we'll see. Mm. I've only ever made them with raspberries. Has it got like all sorts of weird and wonderful fruits? It in? does. Yeah, this is going to have strawberries and blackberries. If there's any blueberries and raspberries left from in the house, we'll I'll probably put them on. But uh, passion fruit is the other thing thing that's going to go on there as well mm. and i think we've got some kiwi so i might throw kiwi on there get wild settle down now steady I know. on i know Just get back in your box <laughs> ah. uh, <laughs> so i've been uh up to a, a number of things but uh one obsession recently has been a new game and i don't often play games these days being a, um, a now 30 year old and having responsibilities and and woes but i have made an exception uh to a game that came out recently 
uh, which was a sequel to The Last of Us, which is The Last of Us Part 2. And um, for those who don't know, it's a sort of like end of apocalypse or zombie game, or the first one was, where, you know, there's these infected uh, who, you know, rather zombie-like and they'll... Uh, They'll chew your neck out, and um, it's all about survival, and it's as much as about escaping nasty groups of humans as it is uh, nasty groups of zombies. But they uh, they released the original game in 2013. I, it was it was a real big hit. I really enjoyed that. And um, but they've taken their time and released the second one. Oh, and it is grim, isn't it, Jess? It is oh. the story. You watched me yeah. play it, didn't you? And the I story did. is just oh, don't. Play it if you're melancholy. Anyway, just give it a miss. But it's very, very well written. I know it's a bit been a bit controversial in the news because um, I think. Um, oh, can I give a spoiler away? Probably not. No, I won't do that. Um, but um, let's say some of the writing choices were questioned by the community. Um, but uh, I think they're just butt hurt personally. <laughs> what a phrase. <laughs> but can thoroughly recommend it though brilliant game it is it's a beautiful piece of work as well like it's not my thing to play i wouldn't play that really i'd probably be okay at it and things like that but like guns and stuff like that are never my forte I love a good bow and arrow though bow and mm. arrow is always my thing but watching it as, as someone watching it i was invested in the storyline and I was invested. It was just pretty. And it was like, they did a really good job. No wonder it took them, you know, seven years to release the next one. Um, so it is visually stunning. It's like watching a film. It, more more, more like watching a series, in fact. Because mm -hmm. um, how long did it take me in the I think it was about 20, 20, 25 to 30 hours worth of gameplay. And yeah. I did that over the course of three days, was it? Yeah, a bit longer, but not too much longer than that. Yeah, I put put it this way. By the end of it, I told you I can't, we can't watch anything like that for a while. And then uh, we started something new, didn't we, John? We started uh, Walking Dead, didn't we? Yeah, zombie fever. <laughs> yeah, but we'd, we've already watched The Walking Dead. So, uh, yeah, we have. Uh, well. <laughs> uh, but we decided to re-watch it. Um, yeah. I think uh, I think we all get to that stage where we like to re-watch a series. I, I'm not quite ready for Game of Thrones, though. I'm... Uh, still disappointed with how that final season went so it'll be a while before i can go back to the beginning and accept it yeah yeah but no we've uh really enjoyed being doing that so i've been providing the treats as you've been playing really <laughs> yeah <laughs> been brilliant so right so i have to I have to say jess we've actually received some correspondence oh, we have not we have yeah have we honestly yeah so I can see from the bulge in my intray that uh, we've received a letter this week from a Mrs. Trellis of North Wales. Oh. Uh, but she raises um, some interesting points. And uh, but her, her letter's too long to read in full, but she sent over a great tip for removing any annoying little hairs that collect in the shower plug hole. <laughs> um, app apparently, you, sh you, you, you tempt them up with a carrot and you can pull them out by their long floppy ears. Oh, no. That was a dad joke. That was a dad <laughs> joke. <laughs> Did you like that? <laughs> well, here's to Mrs. Trellis. She's uh, she's very she's a very fine woman. Anyway, oh. she sent over a a series of quick fire questions for us to answer, so we can get, so she can get to know us a bit better. So I thought we'd go through them. So are you going to answer these as well, then? Uh, no, no. I think you should just answer these, uh, and they're oh, going to okay. be quick. So uh, there's there's uh, there's twenty thirty of them or so. So right, right. Oh gosh, right. Are you okay. ready? I am ready. So, how old are you and how tall are you? I am twenty seven and I'm five foot two and a half. Half is important. <laughs> Do you live e near each other or just talk online? Uh, we live together, John and I. We have our own house in Cheshire. What do you like to put on your scrambled egg? Brown sauce, HP sauce. Hashtag not sponsored. Oh gosh, I can't believe I said that. Oh dear. Oh, no. Smash that like button. <laughs> but yeah, no, HP brown sauce. Can I eat scrambled egg without it? You're a heathen. What's your favourite thing to do in the whole world? Read. Do you believe in the theory that whilst we name colours the same way, we all see them slightly differently? Yes. If you could be reincarnated as an animal or any other thing, what would it be? A bit hedgehog. 
<laughs> I thought you were going to say that. You get to hibernate and you're cute and you're round, but you're also spiky. It's like my attitude. <laughs> Is there something you'd like to do but are too afraid to do it? Yes. Okay. Uh, what What would your name? What would the name of your pet dragon be? Uh, Just answer it. D- d- Just do tell it. Me. Tell me. Tell me. Tell me the dragon. Tell What's your favourite cartoon character? <laughs> Quick fire, Jess. The Pink Panther. Pink Panther. Uh, what colour is a mirror? It hasn't got a colour. Do you like cheese in chunks or slices? Chunks. Who is your favourite philosopher? Um, Aristotle. If oh, That's a very serious answer. I I've studied it. I studied ethics and philosophy. <laughs> it, doesn't mean, it doesn't mean it's your favourite philosopher. I was going to go for Patrick Stewart or something. <laughs> If you could meet anyone from the distant past, who would it be? Oh. Let's say fictional or non-fictional. Peter Pan. Peter Pan. Who is <laughs> what? What is the most gangster thing you've ever done? Mate, I'm from Northern Ireland. We don't have gangsters over there. Hmm. <laughs> I probably had a word with a neighbour one time. That was probably some. <laughs> the, 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 my, my heart was pounding G-O. afterwards. Yeah, I know. <laughs> What's your favourite ice cream flavour? Honeycomb. What would you do if the North Pole melted? Cry. Have you ever broken any bones? I have not, but I'm sure I kicked the table about a month ago and my little toe is still sore. (laughs) (laughs) So I'm sure that I broke my little toe. (laughs) If you had Bernard's watch, what would you do? Oh. I think we need to maybe preface this by uh, for, for for the for those over the pond to say Bernard's watch so sort of just is just a kid's thing a tv show where this kid finds a watch and he can start stop time yes yeah and it just pauses time you can't go back or go forward it just pauses time as it is yeah. isn't it yeah. so what would i do i if i'm being honest i'd probably nap that is actually what most people would do i think i, I think people could idealize it and say oh well I'd pause time i'm going to take Donald Trump's phone off him so he could stop posting on Twitter. <laughs> but I think practically what you just said is what everyone would do. Yeah, you just use it to save time, wouldn't you? What is the scariest thing you've ever seen? It. I don't know, it's yeah. not even that scary. <laughs> if you don't like clowns, it's it's pretty horrific, to be fair. <laughs> I, I just thought it was a bit silly, personally. Yeah. I was just like, oh, why is it? Anyway, so favourite Pokemon? Ah. Uh... Squirrel. If you discovered a planet, what would you name it? Why am I thinking so hard about this? Like, this has been one of the toughest questions you've asked me. Come on, answer. You should just, you should just know this. I should just, this is, this is information I should just have. I'd name it after some sort of Latin flower. I don't know which one yet, but that's what I would do. Okay. <laughs> Uh, what would your least favourite way to die be? I don't think I'd like to be kidnapped and murdered. I don't think I'd like to be run over by a bus. Hung, drawn and quartered. Yeah, that's pretty bad. I was going to go with yeah. lowered inch by inch into boiling oil. Oh, first. no, thank you. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. in a house fire, if you had a chance to say one item, what would it be? A childhood comforter. And then you. (laughs) Oh, thank you, dear. What's the worst or most embarrassing thing you've ever done in public? I've fallen... I was thinking about this the other day. I don't know why. But when I was a kid and we used to... Because in Northern Ireland, like, if you were to do trips away, like, you don't go skiing and you don't go, like, to all of these good places. Or at least people like me who couldn't afford those things didn't go. We took a trip, actually, to Manchester and I remember being on a bus with I think it was maybe 10 with a bunch of other people in my class and um, a couple of teachers and I remember falling asleep on the bus and I fell asleep and I must have been leaning over Um, and I just wake up and there's this, this stuff in my hair I'm like, what is this stuff in my hair? Do you ever remember those little alien babies you used to get? Oh, yeah, and if you put them in the fridge overnight and they they have a baby or whatever. Yeah, 
you know, the gel stuff and the sticky stuff around them. The goo, yeah. Yeah. People were throwing that at my hair as I was asleep on the bus. Ooh, and I woke sticky. up. And it was, yeah. I woke up and I was like, pretended like I wasn't even asleep. But everybody knew I was asleep. And apparently I was snoring really loudly as well. <laughs> That stuff smelled like chemicals. It was awful. It I think did. every school had their own sort of little myth about what happened when you put two of them together to get them to have a baby yeah. or something. I never could get them to have a baby. No. Strange I did try. Not. I used to I really liked them. Are you ready for the final question? Oh gosh, are we already at the final? Go on then. What's the way that you eat a cream egg? Oh, now I split it in half and I scoop out the middle. I eat the middle first. And as slowly as I can. And then and then I eat the chocolate. Now, if you're smart about it, you don't open the wrapper the whole way. You leave the chocolate in the wrapper as you eat in the middle so it doesn't melt onto your hands. What kind of monster are you? Just eat it in one go. In. Well, one. No, you, Done. You, you cannot <laughs> eat those in one bite. I do. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best way. It's the only way. Oh. So thank you, Mrs. Trellis, for those... Uh, Quick fire questions. Shall we say, if anybody else has any... Please don't write to us. Yes. <laughs> no, do it. I want John to answer some and we have to get him some new ones. So if you're listening and you have some quick fire questions you want John to answer in the next podcast, I will ask him, send them in to gracelessliving at gmail.com. Keep it clean. And within reason, he will answer those questions. <laughs> Shall we? Uh, we move on. I um. I, I think I. I said uh, we'd have a new segment in this podcast, which was limerick of the episode. So go on, give us yours. Oh, okay. Are you ready? I'm really proud of this one. One Saturday morning at three, the cheesemonger shop in Paris collapsed to the ground with a thunderous sound, leaving only a pile of debris. <laughs> oh, because it, it's a cheesemonger. <laughs> Oh dear. <laughs> Moving on. I, I, even though I suggested the segment, I, I forgot to do it. So moving on to the topic of the episode now. You did not. Yeah, I did. I'm afraid. Come Sorry. on. Can you make one up? Not on the spot. No, no. I'm not that intelligent. Right. So moving on to the topic of the epi- uh, topic of our episode, which was Victorian Village. So um, yes. This is a place Jess and I went to the a couple of days ago, which is Blists Hill Victorian Village in um, in Telford, in in the town of Iron Bridge. Um, and it's a it's a, a working village with actors in it of and the that preserves the age of steam in the Victorian era, um, and they have all sorts of shops there and and, and demonstrations about what Victorian life was like, and it was great fun, wasn't it? Yeah, it was really good. I, I enjoyed it a lot. It was my first visit. You've been before, haven't you? I have, and, but when I was a teenager. Yeah, quite a while ago. And it was my first visit and it was a really nice day. The weather was perfect for it. Um, so we just walked around. I think we spent a good couple of hours. I couldn't believe how long we'd actually spent there. But um, I really enjoyed some of the demonstrations they had because obviously with all of the restrictions and things that they had going on, you think, oh, well, there's not really much to do in a place like that. But actually, they'd done it so well. They're, um, they were really, really good. I was very impressed with how they kept social distancing and kept people safe that way. And it was really yeah. good. So I think like I enjoyed being able to still go into the exhibits, even if it was just like they just said one family at a time or two people at a time, didn't they? Yeah, kudos um, to them, really. They did it very well. And I'd, I'd yeah. recommend anyone going at the moment. Um, very few people there because they yeah. limit the amount of intake. Um, but yeah, I just thought we'd uh, talk about a few of the things we that, that they did there. So I have a childhood memory of, um, well... First of all, I know my nan used to use this stuff because uh, I recognised the smell. Uh, and then latterly, when, when me and my dad went to this, went to Blister's Hill um, when I was a teenager, we got some of them as well, which is uh, carbolic soap. And it's got this very distinctive smell and it's always bright, ready pink. Uh, I think that was on purpose back in the day to indicate that it was like this carbolic um, antiseptic soap. But uh, it's... Uh, quite pungent and 
it, and you get it in these blocks is that, and uh, quite quite rough big blocks like house bricks sort of thing it's not that big I'm exaggerating but it sat on the side of our bath for maybe 18 months before it went away <laughs> it just, just doesn't disappear disappear but anyway it was um, it was originally developed um, after the surgeon Joseph Lister discovered it had antiseptic properties um, he had an oil which he put on this rag or something and uh, he applied it to a, um, a fracture which had broken the surface and after a few days he'd noticed it hadn't got infected and uh, so he carried this on and they started using carbolic acid in, in surgery and stuff to stop the spread of um, bacteria uh, and that led to carbolic soap um, so there you go and they make it there so I, I, I got myself some to, uh, to, to be nostalgic with yeah, you really like it because you love that clinical. It do, it smells like a hospital. That's how I can describe it. It <laughs> smells like a hospital. If you've ever walked through some wards, and I did, I've done quite a few because with my mum working in hospitals, and like just series of having to visit them. But just when you walk through it, there's a distinct smell of like just clean medical, just smell, and that's how I can describe it. And that's how our bathroom smells now. Yes. <laughs> you got it, even though I said I wasn't a big fan of the smell. <laughs> yeah. So where else did we go? We went to loads of different places. Um, my favourite place that we went to was the print shop. And this was really cool to me. Because obviously, as a self-proclaimed writer or blogger or whatever you want to call what I do, I love words. And I love reading and material of reading and things that have meaning. And so to see how they would print a newspaper or a poster or anything really um, in the Victorian era, then I was I was really excited. So literally, we stood out waiting because somebody else was in before us and was waiting for about 10 minutes. And it was like kind of like jumping up and down like a little child waiting to go in because it was only a diddy tiny little shop and we walked in and there was this lady behind some perspex glass and um, she was saying actually we're making some new posters so we're in the middle of doing something and they had this massive printing press which was on the our left hand side and it was an american it was called the bald eagle press or, or something like that and it was um huge and then there was a little one which she shown us how you would use behind her. And apparently you'd have to put something in every six seconds. And it was quite dangerous because you could get your fingers trapped and there was lots of work accidents, obviously, and with no, you know, policies to go around to protect the, the workers. Yeah, it looked lethal, that thing. Yeah, you yeah. definitely get your fingers out of the way. I mean, 600 an hour, is, uh, not bad. It must have revolutionised... Um... Uh, the media industry, you know, like to get news out to yeah. people that quick, that quickly. It would be the place if I was in the Victorian times. I'd want to be a job in there. That's that's like that's where I'd want to work. You found a story on one of the posters, didn't you? Which you liked. I did. I do not have it. Do you not? I have it. Um, shall you I? You have it. it. Yes. So it's uh, it's quite famous, and you've probably heard it before. But for those who haven't, it's a sad, sad story about nobody. So this is a story about four people named. Everybody, somebody, anybody, and nobody. There was an important job to be done, and everybody was sure that somebody would do it. Anybody could have done it, but nobody did it. Somebody got angry about that because it was everybody's job. Everybody thought that anybody could do it, but nobody realised that everybody wouldn't do it. It ended up that everybody blamed somebody when nobody did what anybody could have done. Well done. <laughs> That's quite the tongue twister, actually. That is quite the tongue twister, but it apparently it's a very famous story. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so the next highlight was the, the, the chips. Oh. oh, this was your favourite, wasn't it? Oh, they're brilliant. So chips made in beef dripping. Oh, they're to die for. It's the only way to do it. Um, I thoroughly recommend you go to visit for that alone. But the sweet shop was good. 
as well, when, whilst we're talking about food, um, you find some, found some sweets that, uh, that I'd never heard of before, didn't you? Yes, the rosary apples. And um, they're just like little apple-flavoured sweets covered in sugar. Um, but they, I remember getting them as a, ch- as a child um, and it really brought me back when I seen them. Yeah, it was great, that was. Um, so other little things they had, they have uh, an iron foundry um, uh, and a big steam hammer. Um, so they were, they were there preparing the casting moulds for like coasters and like, house signs that they'll make for you. Uh, yeah. It wasn't quite running while we were there, but it was great to have tours uh, from, from, the, from the guides when, um, yeah. when there were so few people around. It was, it was great, great, very knowledgeable people. They were, they were very full of information. Like they told me stuff about the Titanic that, you know, I didn't know and, and things that they were just a wealth and a fountain of knowledge. And I particularly liked, um, the man that was working with the molds. Um, what was, what would his job title be, John? Um, I don't know what Caster? his title would be. No, I wouldn't have thought no. so. No, uh... but he, he cast, he, he, they hand make all of the molds that make the coasters or, you know, they had aisles or trains or stuff to put your teapot on. They have all these different kind of molds that they would pour hot iron into, but they have to make them themselves. And yeah. like he was using sand and he did the whole process in front of us. But like he'd been doing this for years like what did he say he was there for about 30 years 30 years he said he'd been working there yeah yeah and he's like one of one of these very few people in the uk that still do it by hand um and it was he was just very interesting and he wasn't playing a character that was actually his job (laughs) you know to make these things and i think that was something that set aside bliss hill for me um from any other kind of Victorian, like it wasn't acting. These people truly enjoyed what they were doing and they were passionate about it. And that's what added to the experience for me, really. I think a lot of them are volunteers as well, which is great. Oh, wow. Yeah, I didn't know that. That is really, really great. So there's a few things there we we didn't see because of of the Rona and things. A few exhibits were closed, like the tar tunnel and the, the mine was not open. Uh, when we didn't get to go in the schoolhouse, did we? But that was only because it was full no. of people. Yeah, but, there was a little fair and a house. It was great for children as well as adults. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's uh, that's enough of an overview of that. Um, mm. I think uh, I think I will leave it there, shall we? So the next episode will uh, be a special episode, which um, I won't tell you the location of uh, for now. We'll let you keep keep you guessing. But uh, we'll be doing it on location, so uh, I'm looking forward to doing that. Hopefully, I am uh, too. I'm hoping that you'll hear some birds about. and things in the background is what I'm hoping. Um, so it'll be quite atmospheric. Um, but yeah, I'm very excited about that. But John, before we go, I have a question for you. Oh, yes. What would you call a dragon if you had one? Derek. <laughs> And on that note, we will see you again shortly. It's bye from me. And it's bye from her. Bye. (laughs) Bye.